some people on already. They're all in the waiting room. Hey, Ryan. That's awesome. Hey, Shar, how's it going? It's excellent, excellent, excellent. Great. Hey, David, how's it going? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How's life treating you? Uh, I can't complain. <laughs> well, if well, I do, don't, it won't matter. <laughs> yeah, and don't don't because we're on Facebook Live right now. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we're we're all positivity then. That's all right. positivity. That's exactly right. So we can go ahead and start letting people into the Zoom chart if we haven't already. I'm about to start right now. Great. And I am going to share this to my page so that people who have not invested yet can feel jealous. <laughs> so if they haven't joined in yet and they haven't been part of our group, um, uh, then that's on them. <laughs> listen, listen to hear why you should be part of our journey. Okay, so do do we, Ryan, are you there? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, Shar, let me know when you feel like we have enough critical mass to get started, and I will. Okay, good morning, everybody. I think they're saying virtual good mornings. <laughs> right. All right. Um, let's see here. I like to start and stop on time. It looks like people are starting to come into the room. I don't want to be the one that slows us down with this. So welcome investors and potential investors. This is a very exciting day today. It's the first day of having an investor meeting after Republic. Um, this mission of where we're trying to do has been a long time coming. I'm very excited about it. Um, if, if any of you have seen our past episodes of, um, our investor meetings, you'll know that, you know, this has all been crescendoing behind the scenes with family and friends. So we had a first group of family and friends that probably put in about 60,000. And now we're at about 250,000. So at the end of the day, we're a bottled water company. And there's really two divisions. Um, there's really two divisions in our meeting, um, in our building. One division is designed to sell our current products, which is our spring um, integrity and our positivity, and both of which are doing very well. I'm going to have updates on, on those later. Our other, our other division is in the building the plant. The plant division is on a much slower trail than the current sales position. In order to get us our money back, and again, I'm not the C CEO, I'm the lead investor of the group on here, but for us to get our money back the quickest is to actually sell what we currently have. So that's what Starwalker has been doing. It's been selling the current brands we have that we do through a separate manufacturer, but using the money from the brands and from this fundraise to build us a plant. So we don't have to rely on our manufacturer and we can compete for bigger jobs and bigger contracts because we don't have this manufacturer hanging over our head. So we are going to operate this meeting today a little bit of how I operate my life as a business attorney and a serial entrepreneur. When you own a business and there's all these things flying around your head every day in both your business and your personal life, you have to have a strategy on how to align them. My strategy is a strategy of called inside out. The first thing I do is check my faith. Is the, when everything's going crazy to make sure my faith is okay, make sure I'm in good connections with my spirit. Then I check my body to make sure my body's okay. I just worked out today for the third day in a row, which makes it a habit, five miles a day. <laughs> so that's three days. I'm trying to get to six weeks in a row of doing five days of working out okay so i'm trying to do a six week five star week i don't know what you guys call that but i call that workout beast if i get to that I, i've been day three of the first week so i'm not there yet but it's been exciting uh felt the um, adrenaline of being out of the, i was inside because of the pandemic you know my, a lot of us gained that pandemic 15 all my face was all puffy my and my kids making fun of me so i'm gonna I'm going to challenge you guys and myself to try to get that down by the next investor meeting. Uh, but my family's doing good. Everyone's healthy. I'm blessed for that. Hopefully all your family's doing well as well. We did use this opportunity, though, to expand our staff internally. So as we spread out from who I am and who 
I'm doing with my people. The next thing I always think of is my staff. I always think about who are the people helping us to build the brands. Shar Ross, who, who's our chief marketing officer, she's over there. Um, you, you may have seen her before in some of the past videos, but um, we've actually joined two other people, two, three other people to the team. Um, Sydney Berry, she's actually a um, FAMU student and she's working this summer sort of intern part-time. She's been in charge of all of our social media. So if you like that social media game, you'd like to see what, what we've been posting in Facebook over the last few weeks and on Instagram, and we've grown our followers to, to 8,500, that's all Sydney. She's doing a fantastic job. She has a great way of taking what we're doing every day and putting it into our system. So Sydney joins our crew. We got Dwayne, Dwayne's from New Jersey. He moved down to Atlanta. I want to say to work with us, but to also be close to the family. Uh, Dwayne's been our chief of logistics person. His job is to move things from A to B, and he's done a great job of that. So when you order cases or people order truckloads, Dwayne's the one that's making sure it goes along and gets where it has to go. We also added Ashley. She's the executive assistant, not necessarily to me only, <laughs> to all of us as investors, but she sort of keeps everything rolling on time in the office, keeping me in appointments. There's lots of opportunities happen filtering through a lot of inquiries, things like that. And we're looking to add two more people. We're looking to add uh, a salesperson. So we have sales contractors who are sort of worked on commission basis and they go out and sell, but we need people inside to kind of covet some of the internal um, opportunities and leads we get. So we're actually going to hire a salesperson. It's, this won't be a crazy job. It'll probably be 60,000 plus commission. So you should know that in case before you start referring people over to me, <laughs> it's like, hey, look, it's 60,000 plus commission. Uh, and also a finance person to start to handle some of the invoicing and billing and things that we do internally. We have also, that's outsourced right now, but we like to bring somebody inside to process things on a regular basis, particularly as we start to kick up the fundraiser. We're going to have questions too throughout this, so you can leave your questions in the chat, and then Shar or I will go through the questions and then be able to decipher which ones we want to respond to. Um, so let's talk about revenue. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Anybody who knows me as a business attorney, that's all I care about when clients talk about it. I want to hear about how we're making money, where's the money coming in from, and how are we doing? Well, as I mentioned to you before, the plant's not built yet, so the plant's not generating any revenue. And that's okay, because that's a long-term process, at least a year, year and a half. But in terms of our sales since um, we've, we've uh, launched, it's been really, really, really productive. We have truckloads on the way to New York. We have truckloads on the way to New Jersey. We have truckloads on the way to North Carolina. And City Trends expanded us to 500 stores. What does that mean for us? Well, think of it this way. City Trends not only gave us the opportunity to put our product in 500 of their stores, they actually allowed us to put a stand in their store. So when you go to City Trends, that stand is our stand. That actually gives us footprint and real estate inside of City Trends that we don't have to argue for or fight for. What does that mean? If we add products, if we change labels, if we have to do something else, we don't have to worry about having space inside of City Trends. We've already in 100, and now we're going to go to 500 with all of them having our stands and signage. So we want to change signs out. We can do that. We want to change bottles. We want to change cap, you know, sports cap versus flat cap. That's huge. And City Trends, each of the stores is probably does, you know, 10 cases. So you're talking about three to four truckloads a month. So that's a significant uh, revenue for us that has happened. Uh, I mentioned New York. Um, DJ Envy is in New York. And if you haven't heard, I was on the breakfast show. Hopefully I represented us very well. If you haven't seen the breakfast show, you can check it on our YouTube channel, I believe. Um, but that was actually very fun. And from that, and from our relationship with Envy, we've been working for a long time to get distribution in New York, because like everything else, you can tell people how great a product is, but if they can't touch it, can't feel it, can't buy it somewhere, then they generally feel like, ah, you know, that's nice, but I can't get to it. Well, in New York, that's going to change very soon. We have a truckload coming, um, a couple truckloads coming to distributors in New York. And that'll be distributed in the next 30 days or so. So you'll see it in bodegas in New York coming soon. Uh, same thing with North Carolina and New Jersey. Uh, we're still working on expansion in Texas as well as Florida. So those are really our short-term revenue opportunities when it comes to positivity. With Integrity, is still growing nationwide. Integrity is our other brand. That's our Spring and Purified. That's just your common brand that you buy at the local, you know, 
a grocery store or, or gas station. This brand is what we call a commodity-based business. And so therefore, you're really always competing on price because people are indifferent. They just want to buy the most import, um, they want to buy the most affordable version of that. Well, we already had a national footprint with that, and that is expanding which is why we need our internal salesperson is coming from natural growth. A lot of our distributors are reaching out to us now going, Hey, I want to have more integrity. Oh, I didn't know about this positive. Can you send us positivity? Can you send us sample cases? So that's actually been uh, growing very well. So we have very strong revenue. We're already going to double our revenue from last year. Last year we did 250,000. I think this year will be close to 500,000. So that'll be good um, in terms of that. And that's just projecting now. If things keep going the way they're going, it's going to get even better. So what kind of new opportunities do we have on the horizon in terms of our business at Starwalker? We have a very exciting, two big announcements coming in the next 30 days. One has to do with a celebrity endorser and investor in the company. And he's a, he's a popular uh, announcer from a morning show, not DJ MB. And I think that announcement is coming out later. We're still working with his team on how to release it and how to press release. But I am super excited. This person has so much energy and so much positivity. I think when you guys hear the news, you're going to be very impressed. Uh, also, too, we're working on a Spanish label. So we, we feel very strongly that we can penetrate some markets by having a Spanish label uh, top to bottom. We feel like our, our Spanish brethren and sister uh, would love to sort of be respected in the bottled water game as well. So we do plan on launching a um, Spanish label. Uh, that's probably a little bit longer trail, but that's coming as well. We also have been working with a co-packer here locally, a black company by the name of King Spring Waters just bought a, um, a local spring and they actually wanted to partner with us to uh, help with uh, increasing their efficiency because Starwalker still builds plants and also doing some co-packing with them. And they're here in Georgia. So we had a meeting with them. It's fantastic. We're going to go up there next Tuesday and, and walk through their facility and see what we can do and working together. But the amount of energy that's come from other people just working together, trying to figure things out, it's been great. That When I met King Water, he was in my office like a day later, and we just talked and talked and talked about the industry, about some of the hurdles we have, and how excited we were to use each other's resources to try to figure things out. We're not competitors. Even if I sold water to every single person in the wor world, I'll be out in like half a minute. So I'm not in the business of just hoarding cut water customers. If you drink water, drink water. If you drink it from the tap, if you're an investor though, order water. We got 700 investors. We should have 700 positivity water orders. All right. Also too, we have a partnership with Historically Black Sense. It's an HBCU media program that promotes uh, historically black colleges, universities, uh, their students and alumni. And we do a, uh, we're the major sponsor for them this summer. So all their events this summer will be hosted by Positivity Water, not Starwalker, but Positivity Water. And also too, um, we do a podcast once every two weeks in which me as the business attorney comes on and talks about um, business issues. And that is uh, every Thursday, or I believe it's gonna be every other Thursday. We do it live on Facebook and uh, YouTube, I believe. And then we do a follow-up on Clubhouse, which I'm a member on Clubhouse because I have an Android. <laughs> so I finally got to get Clubhouse. Clubhouse was just being very overly aggressive towards us Android users. And you iPhone people out there shaming us, you keep us from getting the best technology. Well, Clubhouse has figured you out and we're on uh, Clubhouse now, at least I am <laughs> with my Android. So check us out tomorrow night. Um, we'll be again uh, with Historically Black Sense. I think that's the name of their Instagram and social media. And then we'll have a follow-up after show on Clubhouse. We're also a member of the Gathering Spot here in Atlanta. And anybody who knows Atlanta knows that there is a group of entrepreneurs and business and movers and shakers that essentially uh, been working through a hub here called The Gathering Spot. And The Gathering Spot has a lot of the prominent uh, new businesses that are um, growing and up and coming. I, some of them, a lot of them are my clients. I've known Ryan Wilson, the owner, for a while. This is a great opportunity for us. It allows us to have another space, to have meeting rooms, to you know come up with ideas and, and have other... Um, uh, conversations off-site here um, in that in that venue. So we are now Starwalker Industries, a member of the Gathering Spot. Okay, so some of the media opportunities we've had so far. Uh, we talked about the Breakfast Club the morning show. That was awesome. We also were on 107.5 Magic here in Atlanta. That was super fun. Maria Moore did a short interview that aired 
Um, I believe that audio may or may not be on our YouTube. We might have to try to convert that later, but that was a short, a fun little short video. She was super fun, super cool, super down with our cause. And I really appreciate that opportunity. Yahoo Finance picked up our public launch offering that helped tremendously a lot of people placing calls going like, hey, is, is this the, your Star Walker on Yahoo Finance? I'm like, yes, that's me. Um, the 10K project is actually picking us up for a media opportunity. That's interesting. The, the 10K project actually focuses only on black owned businesses that are doing equity crowdfunding. <laughs> so they actually wanted to be a portal like wefunder.com, but found out that there's a lot of black people who just don't understand the investment part or don't understand the business part, let alone getting on a portal and doing all this other things. So they scaled their model back to focus in on a group of investors and bring in companies that are black companies that are raising money through equity crowdfunding and provide a platform for them. So they heard about our story. I interviewed with him. She loved it. We'll be in front of her members in the next coming, coming, coming weeks. I'll let you guys know, obviously, when I appear on the show, but this ought to bring in another round of interested investors. One other side note about this, you know, the, in equity crowdfunding, it's not really me against you, right? It's really us against us. And so what people look for when they come to our crowdfunding site, how much engagement are the other investors doing? How much, you know, what do people feel about it? What are they saying? So to the extent that this is our company, I'm just the lead investor, <laughs> this is our company, the more engagements you can do uh, and we fund it, the more engagements you can do on social media, the more engagements. If you see something that our company posts that you like, comment, oh, this is awesome. I'm glad I'm an investor in this company. I think the idea is that uh, crowdfunding, unlike, you know, investing in Coke or investing in some other publicly traded company, we really rely on ourselves. We self-govern ourselves. No one's making me do this investor presentation or meeting. I'm choosing to do it because it's part of what we're doing. But for me, I want to encourage all of you that this is our company. Let's go out and engage social media, et cetera, and tell people. And I'm going to be the one that gathers all the information and at least quarterly, I'm trying to do this monthly, come back to you and give you updates and then give you a chance to respond. All right, so other things. Um, I was also on Mogul Millenniums. <laughs> that was fun. That was a quick pitch that I did on LinkedIn through a um, person called, well, I don't know the name of her company, but I do know her, her name, but I do know she operates on the name Mogul Millenniums. And we did a quick pitch where they sort of had companies focused and highlighted and I talked about Starwalker. It was fun, but that was also a media opportunity. Um, we also did some fun charitable things this week. <laughs> we uh, were a donor at a local fifth grade picnic. So a lot of times what we've done pre-pandemic and we were starting to do pre-pandemic when we had outings is we would start to uh, work on this closed loop philosophy on trying to teach people, hey, well, not only is this water good for you, not only should you have a bottle, but we as corporate um, manufacturers have a responsibility to get the bottle back. So please bring the bottle back to our booth or our stand and we do something outrageous like offer them a dollar. So when the fifth grade asked us to be um, sponsor for their picnic of 120 something kids. My first thought was that's plastic all over that playground. I don't want to have to pick up caps, etc. So I said, I'm going to get some money and I'm going to go down and we're going to do the $1 return. And so for the fifth graders, we brought in like eight cases of positivity and I handed out the water to them and their parents. And I said, listen, you bring this bottle back with the cap. I'll give you a dollar. Oh man, it was the best time of my life. My 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 fifth grade daughter first thought I was embarrassing her when she was like, can you just give them the bottle instead of tell them about closed loop plastic? But at the end of the day, we got all eight cases back. Parents started to come up to find out what we're doing, what's, some, what's about this company. And the kids absolutely loved it. One kid probably made $7. He just would chase down anybody who was done with the bottle and go, hey, can I have that back? I was like, you got a future in sales, kid. So that was a fun donation. Um, like I said, we got all the bottles back. The kids had a little bit of um, fun with it. They did ask me though, you know, like kids, they're like, you sure you got enough money for all of us in these bottles? And I had to pull out my stack of ones and go, yeah, I got enough money for everybody. You just make sure you bring that bottle back with the cap. So that was a fun event. I wanna do more events like that. I don't think a dollar is appropriate number all the time, but it's just fun to sort of get people's attention. And, and they go, why would you want this bottle back so much? And I would explain to the kids how we have, you keep the plastic together, you can grind it down, but look, all this plastic you guys gave me back, I can take it back and I can go and give it to another person who will grind it down and make it a bottle again. What was interesting is um, in the process, there was a vendor, a food vendor there, popular food vendor in Atlanta. 
they sold their lunch meals to everybody, the parents, the kids, et cetera. When the park was closed, every single trash bin was filled to the top and flowing over of their trash and their truck just drove away. <laughs> and here I am, I put all my plastic in my truck, took it back to our warehouse, right? So here I am thinking like this corporate responsibility has to be bigger than Dave Walker. When they heard that, hey, they can come feed the fifth grade, they just thought profit, 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 put all these paper bags, food out, and then whatever happens to it, oh well. And I think that that has to change. And we're gonna change that by showing people, look, this guy, brought the water, paid for the water to come back. Everyone has an ownership to bring your product back, not just sell it through the grocery store. Another side point is the kids would bring me other plastic, which I took, like, you know, Dasani and other things. And they were like, can I get a dollar for this? I go, no, you got to go to Coke and ask them for a dollar back. I'm giving you a dollar for my stuff. But again, it's awakening them to understanding that there needs to be another level of corporate responsibility. So that was fun. Um, another event we hosted was the Black Golf Hall of Fame. We should have pictures from that coming up soon. That was fun. It was an event here that was hosting some of the, the Black people who are in the Hall of Fame of golf. Amazing event. Positivity was a huge sponsor. We also hosted a, free, a fish fry uh, done by um, <laughs> um, Reggae in the Park. They had a HBCU joint venture with Reggae in the Park, and we, we sponsored the fish fry, so that was fun as well. Um, anything else? I think that's all of it. Um, oh, we're, we're also sponsoring uh, Atlanta Georgia Relays this weekend. It's a um, it's international track event where the top athletes come in and compete. They're going to have 1,000 athletes. About 100 of those are Olympic quality. We've sponsored them in the past with a combination of integrity and positivity. We will be a sponsor this weekend as well. So I believe it's at McDonough High School. So if you're in town or you're in the track, you will see positivity and integrity down at McDonough High School. Um, a couple other things that I want to drop on your lap because you are the investors and you are co-partners with me in this. Um, we have available merchandise. So I know that some people have bought some merchandise, but if you want to have a talking point to talk to people about why you're in the water business or joining this investor call, merchandise always helps. It's always proud to say, this is my company. I own a piece of this, you know, black owned since 19, uh, excuse me, since 2017. Uh, that's available through our positivitywater.com uh, site or a shop.positivitywater. Each, either one will get you there. Um, your perks. I know everybody's asking about the perks. So WeFunder hasn't given us our official final list yet. As most of you know, we're still in the transition of moving people over from reservations to actual investment. So we'll answer those questions. I know a lot of people have questions about that. I have a lot of questions. It's not completely clear to me all the time. But at the end of the day, we will get a list of what everybody put in and got moved over to us. And then we will use that list to send out the perks. We'll have to do it ourselves. We'll send you an email. If you have the buy one, get one free perk, you'll get that. If you have a you know, subscription perk, you'll get that and instructions on how to do it in the email. We expect that email to go out the first week of June. So not next week, but the week after. That way the funds should be shored up. They should do all their stuff on our end and we should get a full solid list of the investors that ought to come through there. Um, also to, so the perks and then, um, you know, we talked about feedback, right? I wanna hear, and if you guys can post, I wanna hear what other people are saying to you when you tell them about your investment. When you go, yeah, I invested in this black owned bottled water business. What are they saying to you? Are they saying that's stupid? Are they saying that's happy, that's good? Can you tell me more about it? And the more feedback that we get as a company, the better we can tailor things, the better we can answer questions and things of that nature. So with that being said, that's the kind of hot topic news items. I guess more will come up maybe as we go through our questions. But um, I'll go through the chat here and then try to see if we can answer questions. Unless, Shar, you have some questions that you immediately identified that I can answer quickly. Hey, um, yeah, so we have a few comments. Um, uh, Paris says, does it matter if the bottle is pure or crushed for recycling? And you kind of sort of touched on it a little bit, but if you could go ahead and kind of explain about the different recycling um, opportunities. So we actually have a um, recycling program for positivity here at our location where if you're in Atlanta and if you feel so inclined to drive uh, your case of water here, we'll give you $3 for every case of positivity you bring back. Um, you have to bring back a case and have it in the package. So we offer um, positivity returns to people who come back. But the question about PET 
and crushing versus not crushing. No, it doesn't matter. So one of the benefits of this bottle that annoys me is that it's actually built to what they call crush to conserve. You crush it down to a little bit, and you put the cap on and you put it away. This still is recyclable, even though it got crushed because it's gonna get ground down, the cap will get separated and it'll get ground down and turn into something else. So if you order the Integri or you have bottles like this, you should be putting them in your recycling bin like this. It actually helps in space and volume. So yes, you can crush the conserve. You're not gonna do that to this bottle unless you've been doing a lot of weights. <laughs> but, but we like to bring this bottle back. It's easier just to put it into the packaging and then bring all the packaging together. And um, I know there's some people in here who are not in Atlanta, but we actually are practicing what we, what we, pre we preach on a daily basis to um, promote recycling and, and try to create this closed loop system. The people who buy this, they are in love with this. The people who buy this recycled PET, these empty bottles, they are in love with it because they can't get raw material like that. Every time somebody offers them something that's mixed with other stuff, they're like, you're going to have a supply of recycled PET, just recycle level one PET one? I'm like, yes, they're super excited about it. Now, they're not going to pay me the same thing we're paying for the bottles to be returned, but to have an um, inventory that you can sell off and offset our cost for the return, that's just good news all around. So. That's uh, something that we're practicing and we're also going to input going forward. Uh, so you have okay. another question? Yep. Yeah, so we, we have a comment from Maria de Jesus. She said corporate responsibility in the environment space is super important and that she just uh, loves that this is the forefront as well. So bravo to us. So thank you for that comment, Maria. Uh, Tristan wants to know, she says, I live in Savannah. Are you going to slowly branch out towards us? Yes. So uh, I'm sorry, what was the name, Tristan? Tristan. Yes, Tristan. First of all, thank you for joining the positivity train. Hopefully you're feeling that positivity today. You're walking away as a proud investor knowing that we are doing the best we can to, to make you your money back. Because at the end of the day, I'm a for-profit attorney. We're doing everything to make a profit. But at the same time, giving you a sense of social responsibility and what we're doing for the community. Um, so um, Savannah and all these other markets are very tricky. I would love, you know, love. I get a lot of influencers calling from different areas. Oh, I can sell. Oh, I can sell. The problem with distribution is, and we talked about it before with New York, you, if you start talking about something in a certain area, people want it. And water is not something that's easily transferable. So if you say to them, hey, Savannah, we think you should like positivity. You have to say, and you have to go here to find it. All I can say right now is go to a city trends. That's most likely gonna be the place nationally that you can go to find it. So if city trends has a Savannah location, our 500 store rollout should happen in the next 30 days or so. But in terms of us, having a location in Savannah, we need a distributor in Savannah that will say, Dave, ship me a truckload and I got 10, 15 retailers that will buy. So what we have is a distributor program in which people come in and it's like, Dave, I wanna be a distributor. I said, okay, you gotta order 26 pallets or a truckload. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, well, you're not trying to be a distributor then. <laughs> you know. So usually the idea is that we have to find a distributor in the area and that's a push pull thing because distributors will say, I'm not going to sell your product for you. You got to have already people wanting it. But at the same time, when people want it, they need to have it available. So what we have to do is push people to ask for it. So if you want to know the best way to grow positivity and integrity is to walk into your grocery store, walk into wherever and go, this is a black owned company here in Atlanta. Y'all need to have this. And what they'll do is they'll contact their distributors and then they'll distributors to contact me. The price that we can charge when distributors contact me is different than the price we charge when I have to contact them. It's like a record deal, right? If you're a new artist and you got a hot following, a lot of people following you, you can sort of dictate your terms with the record company. But if you don't, if you're an up and coming artist, you only got you and your mom and grandmother and you got somebody to discover you, they're pretty much gonna own what you do. That's sort of where uh, Starwalker is taking the high road to say, look, Costco, all these other big companies, we're gonna go out and build our brand from the ground up and we're not gonna let you, you know, push us back on terms and push us down on price and et cetera. We're gonna build our brand from the ground up. We're gonna build a following and you're gonna to come to us and you're gonna to want to get it from us because if I go to them and I have been going to them and when they give me the terms they wanna do, I'm like, I'm selling it out my trunk. So that's what we have to do 
going forward is to push the local people in your cities and say, you need to have this water on the shelf. This is good water. I like it. And uh, I want you to have it. And then they contact the distributors and the distributors call me. And when the distributors call me, they don't talk about pricing. They don't care at that point because they already got a customer who's going to buy it. So that's the push and pull we all have to play is to walk into these places and say, get this so they can contact the distributor. Because me going out, putting it on the truck and trying to drive a truck around to drop it at all those locations doesn't make sense. They already have trucks coming to them every day. So we got to get on the truck that comes to them every day as opposed to trying to one off. A lot of retailers don't like to do that either. So a lot of people will go into a retailer and say, hey, I can sell you this water. They're not going to consistently take your order because they don't want to have these one-off things. They have a truck that has all their candy and juices and everything on it. They want your product to be on that truck so they can just check it off the list. So some of the distributors we are with is Cisco. So if you know anybody who is ordering through Cisco, you tell them, hey, you're Cisco, you have this product on your menu option. You should put it in your freezer or put it on your uh, counter. So Cisco is a big distributor for us here in Atlanta and the Atlanta airport. So everybody who orders through the Atlanta airport, Gate T, Poppy's Grill, go by there for breakfast. Great breakfast. They have great breakfast. They got this Cuban eggs. Man, it's so good. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, it's lunchtime. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm make, working out. You're though, making, I'm working out. You're making us hungry, David. I got apples hungry. and mandarins here. I'm going to work out. I got my three-day stretch going. I'm not going to ruin it. Um, so uh, to the point of all of us and all of us being uh, big fans of our own company, we need to not to tell retailers that, hey, you need to give your distributor and get this on your truck so that you can have it. But great question. Hopefully when Savannah sooner than you and I both think. <laughs> and so here's another question. Um, hi, Ella. I'm not sure how to fully pronounce your name, so I'm just going to say Ella, if that's OK. Um, she said, is there a different impact on the bottom line if we go to City Trends and buy up cases versus ordering online, or is there a preference? Okay, so on our bottom line, very negligible difference, whether you order online through us because we have to pay for shipping, or if you go through City Trends. City Trends water is already paid for. <laughs> so the good thing is about by the time it ends up on your shelves, City Trends is already paid for it. <laughs> so that's good though, because for our purposes, they have a tracking system. So a lot of the, these big brands will track your, um, they call it a SKU or UPC code down here. I don't know, the light's kind of on the run, but there's a UPC code. So it keeps up with their statistics. So there is good value in going into city trends and buying a couple bottles with friends, et cetera, because of the statistics, not because of necessarily the bottom line. Uh, city trends, like I said, is probably already paid for it. The online orders help in terms of contact and keeping you updated because if you order online, you go into our email system and we ship it here. We, we bottle it, put a little note in the box. If anybody who's re received positivity, you know, we like to put a little note in there for you so you can have a positive day. Um, but to us in the bottom line, it really doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, we, it all comes back to our company. We, we make about the same. If you ordered it online versus picking up, if you bought a case at City Trends versus buying it online, it's about the same versus coming here and pick up. We have some pickups, people who do pickups at a five case minimum out of our warehouse here. You can call and order a pickup. So all of that, it's about the same margins. It all helps. It's all wonderful. It's about access to you really as the customer. What's easier for you to have it delivered to your doors to go into a City Trends? Maybe you're going into City Trends anyway to buy some wrap snacks. <laughs> See, City Trends sends out an email to all of its customers. And we've been kind of waiting to see when they would announce their customer they had positivities. Well, they had a snacks day and we made the list right under wrap snacks. So I think under like under Juicy J's ramen noodles or somebody, it, seems it says positivity, alkaline water is available. Hey, I'm not knocking wrap snacks. I've heard tremendous things about wrap snacks that are good. And in fact, when, once we uh, get back from traveling, uh, we plan to have a little wrap snack section in our office because I just think that's the coolest thing. It started as something small, but it has grown and it's grown fast. So all respect to our locally produced wrap snacks down the street. And uh, if you're in City Trends, grab some uh, positivity with your wrap snacks. And we have another question from Tristan. She says, um, will we be branching off to other products besides water, such as energy drinks? So, yeah, I mean, I think that, so you, you, I'm willing to be an open book with how this industry works and how SKUs work. So every, we have three SKUs, right? We actually have a little bit more than that, but we have three. We have the spring. Uh, this is purified. We have a spring brand. So purified is a skew. Springs a skew. 
positivity is a skew. Positivity with a flat cap, that's a separate skew. So we have different products that have a different skew number. When you start to expand your brand and when you see people out there trying different spinoff things, they really have to commit to the SKU number if they're doing it with somebody else. So if I go to my packer and I say, hey, I wanna have a zero calorie drink for Starwalker that has flavors in it. I have to justify my SKU and the, justify the volumes, the inventory, how much, where, which plants. We have, our co-packer has 11 plants across the country. So there's a big rollout that goes with the new SKU. So you gotta have either cash, like the big companies have to say, look, I don't care, I'm just gonna try this or your own production facility which is what we don't have. So the, even every time you have this middle person producing for you, you sort of have to be accountable to them to how you want to roll out new products. New, suppose we wanted to get a new bottle. Suppose we like the fancy bottle and we had it came up with a new shape. Well, talk to the producer, buy the mold, buy the labels. It's very hard to do. So unless we have a distributor that says, I'm going to buy 50,000, 100,000 cases of you if you produce this, and yes, we can have a new SKU all of a sudden. But short of that, we have to be very careful about what we pick and choose. We've mostly been focused in on bottled water. Um, anything that is a derivative of water, we can look at. I know that our manufacturer does a, they do a caffeine water. I mean, I, I don't really know about caffeine water, but I don't, that didn't really, I had that once and I couldn't stop shaking. I was driving, I was like, I don't, I don't even drink coffee all the time like that. So, but people like caffeine water. So they they actually have products within their current inventory and SKUs that I could sell to other people, but I'm not really that impressed <laughs> with some of their product lines. I just stick to what we have. But good question. Um, I think when we have that plant going, that'll be something that we can really dive into and look at. Hey, David. Um, Paris said that's good that she was able to buy some uh, wrap snacks there in Vegas. So wonder what <laughs> I wonder what flavors um, they got. So if you post that in the chat room, then we'll all know what the good uh, the best flavor to get is. Um, and then um, Maria said that she appreciates the verbal and virtual updates that we're providing to our investors in our meeting. But she says, will there be a location where all of the investors can get these amazing updates and in, um, have, ex have access to um, share it with other people? So I shared the link that we have. So you can go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, the link is all, everything can be found at invest.starwalkerindustries.com. Is that the link you put up? So if you hit invest.starwalkerindustries.com, yes. that's going to have the invest button, but it's also going to have the registration for the next investor meeting, which we'll have to set after this, as well as the prior videos, which is our YouTube channel. So um, that's all these prior videos that I've done really since day one is our YouTube channel. However, WeFunder has its own social media platform and WeFunder actually promotes uh, once it's platform companies like Starwalker to post in their platform so that they can give um, investor updates. So oftentimes when this meeting is over, we will take this cloud version of it, download it to YouTube, and then I will put a link of the meeting into WeFunder. And then WeFunder sends you an email saying Starwalker has an update, you click, and then it's the video. But yes, we want you to share with your friends. I'm not saying anything I wouldn't say to your friends. Hopefully your friends are on this call. But this is not, we're not private anymore. I used to have to tell my family and friends for the first four weeks, like, Shh, keep it low, keep it low so we can get good pricing. <laughs> but now that's all over. We're public. So I have to talk on this like I'm the president of the United States right now. I mean, I don't think there's anything in here in terms of trade secrets that you can go and use against us. And I don't think that I've breached any sort of confidentiality. And um, the good thing about, you know, this equity crowdfunding is this is what it's for. If good CEOs and people who run their company right will do very well with equity crowdfunding. People who are goofing off and who didn't think, think, think through their business plan and sort of just threw some ideas out there, they won't do very good. But that's all you can ask for is to compete. All you can ask for is not have to go into these back private rooms with people who don't look like you and try to convince them to invest in your product. You wanna have a fair ground where people can ask questions, have an open forum, talk to the CEO directly, ask the CEO questions directly. And no small business on that platform should be too big not to talk to somebody. I mean, some of them on there are like, ah, you can't talk to the CEO directly. Like, what are you talking about? You're not that big. You're just a private small company. You should, I pick up the phone. Oh, here's a funny story. So we have Instagram. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure how Instagram works when it comes to the video presentations. So apparently, if you don't change your settings, 
you someone can press video for your company and actually like call you through Instagram. So I'd never had this happen to me before. So I was traveling and somebody, my phone's ringing through Instagram. I'm like, what is this? So I answer it. And the guy's sitting there like, oh, it's you. <laughs> I didn't expect you to answer. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you doing? Who's this? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm an investor and I have some questions and blah, blah, blah. But if we went on and on, he was just so excited. He took a screenshot and he's telling his family and friends like, hey, this is the guy from the MB show. He's talking to me now. So I love the way that felt. I love the way it felt for people to have instant contact and him to feel validated about his investment. Cause you know, we funder tried to rush me through this process and say, Oh, you know, you only need to be private for friends and family for about a week or two. And I was like, nah, y'all don't know black investors, black and less investors need at least two Sundays <laughs> before they invest just to make sure everything's okay. So we stressed it out to a month of friends and family just to get people comfortable with not only their idea and the investment, but also move their money around. You know, we don't always move our money around like that real quick. So we had to get people a chance to sort of get settled in. That's sort of what's happening now in the public side of it. People get excited, they put the money in and then WeFunder says, hey, I need to take the money out of your account. So we have to constantly give updates and support one another to say, no, you know, I talked to this brother, I saw his team, I understand what they're doing, I've had the product before. And that's how we spread the message and that's how we become intentional in this market. And that's how we put ourselves in position so that we can actually not just sell our product, but actually bottle it and produce it. And that ultimately will put us in position. Which brings me to another point, nobody on here should be thirsty. If any of you are thirsty right now, it's your fault because positivity water investors always have water on them. So if you're in Atlanta, come by and get some. If you haven't ordered it online, order it online. Talk about it and tell people, but it's good water and you should never, never be thirsty. <laughs> any other questions, Shar? Um, no. Oh, I will say that, um, who is it? Uh, Tristan said that she got the Little Bozy Louisiana heat wrap snack. And she said it was so good and it was hot. But guess what? She had some positivity water to cool it down. <laughs> I have repeatedly heard praises about wrap snacks. It's not our company, <laughs> but I, I, the fact that positivity is paired with them and they got some hot snacks. I think that positivity watches it down great. That's awesome. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Someone asked here, I think it said, um, shared about us on the money show a few weeks back. What's the process to invest in positivity alkaline water? So Starwalker Industries has two different divisions we talked about. One is the current production or distribution division, which we sell our current brands. And the other one is the plant that we're building. When you invest in Starwalker, you're, building, you're, you're investing in both. We're using your, the first early money to grow our current brand so we can stay relevant and revenue generating. And then on the latter end, as we start to get into millions, we start to put it towards the plant. But the current brand owns the brand's integrity and positivity alkaline water. Positivity Alkaline Water is a subsidiary. We actually created another company underneath Starwalker. Starwalker owns 100% of Positivity, except for the percentages we've allocated to certain people like Envy and other people like that. But Positivity Water still owns at least 80% of that company. The other 20 has been allocated in, um, in terms, of, terms of incentives and things like that for some of our influencers and workers, et cetera. So investing in Starwalker is a direct investment into positivity alkaline water. But good question. Um, I think that is about it right now as far as questions in the chat room. And you know, if anybody wants to um, unmute themselves or turn their video camera on and just chat with us, you can feel free to do so. Um, David, you wanna talk about our different social media channels? Yes, so um, Sydney, as we talked about before, is doing a great job of establishing the Starwalker social media channels. Because Starwalker for seven years has been business to business, we haven't really developed them. So mostly Starwalker's activity is on LinkedIn and Facebook. Starwalker does have Instagram, but I don't think it has a lot of followers. So from a high level corporate level, Starwalker engaged with them at LinkedIn. And the reason LinkedIn is important is that's where a lot of B2B and distributor contacts happen in LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, follow Starwalker Industries, share their story. A lot of people communicate from business to business on LinkedIn and Facebook, as you, we all know about Facebook. In terms of positivity, however, its lead social media channel is Instagram. 
and they do post on uh, Facebook as well. And I think they also post in LinkedIn, but most of the social media traffic from positivity uh, comes through Instagram. And so you can follow us on Instagram uh, uh, for positivity and then follow us on LinkedIn for Starwalker. You could actually follow us for both companies across all sort of mediums, but I'm just trying to give you the insider investor track on where the hot stuff's gonna come from. And not to mention the WeFunder site as well. Uh, can I invest again? Yes. So the investment will be open for about three to four months, which takes us right around to Labor Day. So this will be the summer of fundraising, but you'll be able to invest up until um, probably uh, end of September, if I had to guess. So if you've invested already, you can go back, add to your investment and go from there. Um, like I said, we start, we should, we, so just being fully transparent, we have not received any money from WeFunder. I don't care what number they put up there. <laughs> we have not received any of it. It's still in their escrow. They have it and they're going to distribute it to us, I guess beginning sometime in the next week or two. I don't know when, <laughs> this is all very new to me. But once we get that, we'll have a very clear about, okay, this is the money we got and who we got it from. So we'll be able to sort of really give you our own information about whether your investment investment been received after we start receiving it versus right now we have to ask we funder okay this person's in they're good they're good yes yes so they've given us some instructions ryan thomas was also probably on this call he's done a great job sort of talking to investors so if you haven't talked to ryan you can hit that that invest.starwalkerindustries.com link and he can actually set up an appointment with him and he can actually walk you through sort of how to make sure your investment's final and done but yes, you can always um, go through there and invest and increase your investment. Always time. All right, Shot, we got a few extra minutes. Any other questions? That you could ask some legal questions if you want. You can ask, I'm an NFL agent. <laughs> you can ask questions about the NFL if you want. It doesn't have to be related to water. It can be related to something else. I just like to come on here and share the story with everybody, give them updates on the excited things that can happen. Um, obviously, we're always open to ideas. If you have something or relationships or connections you think are helpful, email us at connect at starwalkerindustries.com. We find you might be surprised the things that we don't know. <laughs> I tell people all the time, like, this is a silly idea. There's no such thing as a silly idea. We have 700 investors. We should have 700 silly ideas. You'd be surprised what works. So I tell people all the time, our investors, please send over uh, any sort of recommendations. Uh, when do we start receiving perks? I think I mentioned that before. You should start receiving them the first, the second week in June. You'll receive an email with instructions on your level of perk and what to do next. But you receive an email because we actually don't have all of your physical addresses yet either. We only have your city state zip code. So there's a lot of information we don't have to start sending that out, but we will start in uh, the June, June 6th have some sort of idea and start emailing you to say, hey, you're an investor, you have this perk here, here's your code to use it, or here's the information you need to do so we can start shipping you the positivity out. Besides your last name, what made you call the company Starwalker Industries? <laughs> it actually was my daughter's. Um, we talked about uh, this, if you haven't heard the story before, this Outrageous Go poster actually came from my Outrageous Go. But um, we went to church one day and the pastor took a whiteboard and he rolled it out to the parking lot. And he says, look, we are going to manifest our outrageous goals on this whiteboard and pray it up to God in the universe. And he had all these colorful sticky notes and you'd write out your outrageous goal and put it on that board. And I would read everybody's on there, like, you know, a new house or a dog or kids or whatever their outrageous goal was. And for me, it was a moment in which I had to sort of take inventory of my life and people who know me know my outrageous goal is to have a Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> and the only way to get a Super Bowl trophy is a player, as a coach, or as an owner. And I can't play or coach. So my outrageous goal is to own the NFL team and win a Super Bowl trophy. Because to have the team without the trophy is a waste of time. <laughs> but at that moment, when I started to assess my life and we were driving home, and I was like, man, if I'm going to put that out there, and if that journey is 2 million miles away, how am I going to get there, right? Like, it's, it may be 2 million, but I might be, I may walk it in that direction. And attorneys, attorneys aren't owners, you know, they get hired by owners. So I said, okay, what are some of the businesses that make sense for me that I can get into to be an owner one day? 
And bottled water, my engineering background, my client who was helping us build this plant, I went to a plant and fell in love. So I said to my kids, I want to start a bottled water company. I was like, you guys can go in and, and help me by picking out the name. And so they had a lot of different names and they like they came up with this name, Starwalker, and I loved it. I was like, I like Starwalker. Um, they came up with some other crazy names too, but I think this one stuck out. Um, what's funny about my kids is that I do everything, right? Came up with the idea, built the company, have the water produce. I, I actually have it at the warehouse. I pack it up in my truck, drive it all the way home. And they can't even take it from the truck to the house. I'm like, y'all, man, I can't believe this. I did everything. I made this out of nothing. <laughs> and we made this out of nothing. And here I brought it to the doorstep. And y'all can't even bring the cases inside out of my truck. Man, these kids, man, they are not very <laughs> grateful. But at least their name, Starwalker, is all over everything. So that's a good little story behind that name. Thanks for asking. I love to go down that memory and share that memory. Oh, by the way, too, if you have an outrageous goal that you want to put on our wall of outrageous goals, uh, send it to Shar or email or connect that positivity water. We put your outrageous goal up here and you just play in the universe with the rest of us trying to hit our goals. I think it's fun for people to think about what their outrageous goal in life is and to sort of put it up and have it out there and share it with the world. So if you have something you want to put on our wall of positive thinking, uh, send it over and we'll put a, we'll put a, uh, a colorful sticky note. Or if you want to read somebody's outrageous goals, there's public. Hey, Dave. Yes. Hey, Dave, David, why don't you grab somebody's outrageous go behind you? Okay, and, let's, let's uh, grab one. All right, here's an outrageous go. Wake up in the morning and be grateful. I guess that's an outrageous go for them. <laughs> here's one. So here's, a, here's, go ahead, The David. Lions are going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, it's an outrageous go. <laughs> <laughs> here's one. Uh, I want to fly. <laughs> That's pretty outrageous. <laughs> so make a song with Andre 3000. It's pretty cool stuff up here. So um, if you guys <laughs> want to be part of that, you should send us your message. We'll put it at your outrageous goal up there and go from there. You, you're saying something, hey, Steve, Steven said, very outrageous, go Bears. I believe that alone. <laughs> <laughs> All these NFL people root, ripping on my Lions. <laughs> That's OK. One day, one day, man. One day, we're going to have that Super Bowl trophy like everybody else. <laughs> and but, Tris, Tris, Tristan said her outrageous goal is that she just graduated with a master's in clinical clinical mental health, and she would like to open up her own practice to advocate mental health in our community. So we'll oh, make wow. sure that we post that on our on our wall. Um, so next time we can uh, Tristan reach behind us. Next and time there will be no next time. Goal. It's going up right now. Okay. Okay. There you go. Open a mental health practice. Your outrageous goal has been put out there to 700 people now. How you like that, Tristan? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Providing positivity yes. to positive people. Um, and Mrs. Glenn, again, you know, you can go ahead and feel free to share our link of invest.starwalkerindustries.com with anyone that um, you know that is interested in making an investment. One of the options that are on there is that they can schedule a meeting with um, Ryan, who does our investor relations. So if there's not so if there's something that we have not specifically answered, Ryan can go ahead and walk you through the process. Okay, good. Well, I think we're wrapping up now. I think that we've answered enough questions. I've taken enough um, little shots from little Bears fan on there. That's enough of that. <laughs> we're going to wrap up. This video will be available on YouTube. Our next investor meeting will probably be a month. <laughs> I used to do them every week before we were public, but now. Uh, we just don't have time. You saw all the stuff we have to do, all the people we're hiring, all the things. I don't have time. But I think next month we'll do this again. We'll have another hour. It'll be open dialogue like this, no real sort of agenda. So come with your questions or email questions in advance. And again, I thank everybody on here. This is our company. So when people tell me congratulations, I'm like, it's not congratulations. It's wel welcome aboard. This is our company, your ideas, the things that you do, the money that you put in is all moving towards the ideas that I've laid out in front of us in our business plan and today. Day, and I'll continue to, to, to roll out. But uh, I'm an open book. I'm having the time of my life doing this. I enjoy it. It's not bothering me. I'm actually working with another attorney to sort of help 
um, transition some of the work that I've been doing in the law firm so I can spend even more time over in Starwalker. I've not taken a salary from Starwalker. I don't plan on taking a salary. My plan is to make us money. And once we can make money and have profit, we can start talking about my salary. I'm not saying everybody here doesn't take a salary. I'm saying I don't take a salary. So uh, what we can do is we're going to continue to work hard. We're going to continue to think positive, continue to drink positivity and have a fantastic day today. Shari, you look great. Love your background. Love the, what is this? This is nice. That's real nice. Yeah, that looks nice. I was trying to look extra, extra, you know, positive. No, the investors can tell. The investors can tell. We're going to see what you have on next month. <laughs> all right, everybody. See you later. It was fun. I love all the questions. Love all the positive energy. Thanks for taking time out of your day to share this moment with me. I take nothing for granted and have a fantastic week. Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Be safe this weekend. Happy Bye. holiday. Yes, happy holiday weekend. Yeah. <laughs>